Hello out there and welcome back to Calgary Barbell. We're here at HQ, wrapping up another week of training. It's Friday today, the final day of training for the week. And we had a lot to talk about today. First off, I'm going to mention a new initiative that we're gonna be starting on these vlogs. And that is, we're gonna be giving away a gift card equal to the value of one of our t-shirts from every video. The way that you can participate in this is to listen through the video for the secret passcode that will be somewhere in the video. Don't worry, it'll be blatantly apparent what that is. It'll be embedded within the video, however. And you're also required to come up with a good question in the comments. Give us a question. It can be about me, it can be about lifting, it can be not about lifting, just a good question that provides us something to talk about so that we can continue to try to put more substance in our vlogs and, and interact with all of you in the community as well. So that's gonna be in here. Uh, the next thing that we wanna go through is the Calgary Barbell Training App. If you haven't already, go check it out. We put a hell of a lot of work into it. We've got over 50 programs in that bad boy and it's not just a PDF, it's not just a spreadsheet. We don't just send it to you and say, hey, good luck. What you get with it is membership to our exclusive app members discord, where you have access to me and you have access to Danny, both world level coaches who dedicate their lives, our lives to doing this. And we're in there weekly giving form checks. We're in there pretty consistently answering questions, helping people modify the programs. And there's just a great community in there. So it's a lot more than just, you know, buying a spreadsheet or buying a PDF. But yeah, check that out, calvarybarbell.com. We also have a free 16 week program on there if you'd like it. Now, to get into the training. We started off this week at Elite FTS in Columbus. We flew out very early at the butt crack of dawn on Sunday morning. Uh, traveled for most of the day, got there late in the day Sunday, checked into the hotel, and Monday morning, we were at Elite FTS. Now, I grew up watching and listening and reading content from Elite FTS and from Dave Tate, and he was one of, you know, very few resources online at the time where I was just obsessed with powerlifting and wanting to consume everything powerlifting. So it was really, really cool for me. And I know Dylan was super excited about it as well. The opportunity to be there. I got to be on the Table Talk podcast with Dave Tate. If you haven't already, make sure to go over to Elite FTS's YouTube channel and check it out. It's long, but I mean, it's a podcast. You can listen to it on Spotify and probably Stitcher and whatever else too, all that stuff. But yeah, I really, really enjoyed that and had a great time. Got to know Dave a little bit. We filmed some more content, both for the Elite FTS channel and filmed some stuff with Dave for our channel that y'all have to look forward to. Uh, a pretty robust amount of content, I would say, which is exciting. And then we trained. So I just desecrated a monolift <laughs> by, by jacking it up like 14 spaces above where it normally was so that I could high bar squat and walk out of it, <laughs> which I think is is probably against some kind of uh, some kind of monolift user's manual, but uh, had a, a pretty good squat, continuing to work on getting more exposure to the, to, the, to the back squat, to the barbell squat. So had high bar squats, 225, I think was all I got on the bar and just, you know, did a set of five, a couple sets of four, felt really good, knee was happy no issues. I'm really, really like ecstatic about the rate of progress with my knee. At this point, I'm thinking maybe end of next week, we, you know, toss it back to Mike and say, man, we're, we're good. After my squats, I hit a bench PR, I think anyways. Uh, I don't think I've ever benched 170 for five before. My pauses were not, not as good as I would have liked. If I was my coach, I would have given myself shit for not pausing well enough. So, you know, I, I try to keep myself to that same standard. I can't always execute it in the moment, but looking back at it, you know, I have to put that little asterisk next to the set. Um, did some incline bench that day as well, and the shoulders felt okay. You know, they didn't feel great, but the previous week I wasn't able to do any incline work. My shoulders were just not having it. Empty bar, one plate, two plates, just was not having it. And I think I got up to about 110 kilos, hit some reps, hit some sets, so that was good. Fast forward a little bit, we traveled home. We didn't train the second day because I was exhausted. Dylan sleeps, or, or sorry, snores like a freight train with every breath 
but he's asleep. And I spent most of my night deciding when I was going to throw my two extra pillows across the room at him. Um, so yeah, didn't, didn't sleep well until we got back Tuesday night, got a great sleep, came in, lifted the next day, and that was conventional deadlift day. So conventional deadlifts got up to four plates, a little 405, got five reps there, a couple back offs of four, and the hell else did I do that day? So after the deadlifts, did some more incline work, which again felt pretty good. Got close grip incline this time and uh, found that I was able to get a really good sort of flared out position and got a really, really good amount of work for the triceps in on that movement. Then went through the, the battery, as Mike calls it, of chest flies, front raises, and tricep work. And for a lot of that, just kind of working through stuff on the cables, finding movements that, you know, gave me a good pump. And throughout this block, I've really been pushing hard on these myo rep sets because they've been happening once or twice a week. I'd have this sort of battery of myo reps delt, myo reps chest, myo reps tricep. And uh, through that, I think have really kind of gained not only an appreciation for maybe something a little more akin to like a body, bodybuilding style of training, but also I think the ability to push harder in those movements and really take myself a lot closer to sort of a, a full muscular failure. You know, a nine RPE on a bodybuilding set, I think is kind of different than a nine RPE on like a heavy squat triple. Uh, it's just a very different place to take yourself to, I think. My next day was just biceps and sort of kneehab work. Did some front foot all the way to split squats on the safety bar, was able to add a little bit of weight. Those were much more comfortable this week. Was able to do my step ups from a full mat higher, get a lot more range of motion out of that knee. Again, feeling really good, you know, a little shaky at that, you know, the, the, the sort of deepest point of knee flexion with that movement. It's always been the most problematic movement, so it is what it is and uh, did my biceps on that day. Now, the secret word you're gonna wanna put in your questions is cherry cola. And the other thing that I did was that, uh, that incline cable bicep curl. And Dylan introduced me to that one. If anybody's out there looking for a good bicep exercise, that specifically is, uh, is one of my new favorite bicep exercises. Today, that leads us to today and I was feeling some kind of way today. I was feeling ready to, I'm, I'm kind of champing at the bit to get back to real training. Like I'm, I'm excited, I'm stoked. I'm, I just, like I wanted to just put 220 on the bar and just throw it around. And luckily Seth was here to be a bit of a voice of reason because I think I only pulled 185 for my, uh, or maybe, maybe I went up to 205 pounds last week on my paused sumos and I think I pulled 170 for a triple for one of our videos yesterday. So that was already a bit of a jump and just went up to 182. Just went up to 405 uh, for my first few sets and then threw a 25 on either side. So 455 for pause triple was kind of the top end of the work I did today, but it felt really good. Got to the point where I was like, okay, this kind of feels like work. You know, I threw my belt on, felt, it felt good to, to do some lower body lifts and to feel as stable and confident as I did, you know, sitting all the way down into that sumo position. I feel like if you look at my deadlifts from today and a lot of the deadlifts I've done in the last year, I was way more able to get down there, able to get into the quads. And, you know, that's been a big thing. I've been able to do some single leg knee extensions again this week. Um, I didn't film it, but I did some more of those like plats leg press squats, got a big quad pump today. And then yeah, smashed out some close grip incline, or sorry, close grip flat bench work. Uh, just a bunch of sets there, time rests, and then another battery. So I went through front raises, uh, dumbbell pec flies, which I don't think I'm a fan of. I don't know if anybody out there feels differently, but I just feel like you get a lot here to here, and then from you know the whole rest of the range of motion, there's just nothing. So like I got a chest, I got a pec pump, like kind of just out here. I don't know. It, it doesn't feel like it's the best movement for that. Did my rolling dumbbell tricep extensions, which I'm quite a fan of that movement. And just some straight up dumbbell front raises. Again, felt good. Getting a, getting doms in your front delts is really bad and weird though, because anytime you're doing something in front of yourself, you're like shaky and sore and it's weird. Whew. So. Next week, we're gonna be shifting things. 
with my training in terms of the, the upper body work that's been programmed by Mike that's on more of a rigid schedule. So that's why I pushed for the 170 for five on Monday. And that's why we're, uh, you know, we'll be switching gears there. But also, I think Dylan had a comment from our yesterday's video that uh, he wanted me to address. Well, yeah, normally I wouldn't care to even acknowledge negative comments, but I think this one brings up an interesting point to talk about. Mm -hmm. And they said, powerlifting isn't cool anymore. Uh, yeah, which I think is funny because he is implying that powerlifting was once cool. I'm not sure when this person thinks that powerlifting was cool, whether it was, you know, the 80s and 90s, like the West Side Multiply era, or whether it was like a few years ago when this lifter was still a junior and it was like very hype beast of you kind of thing. But I just, I'm not sure if that's supposed to be like a concern. Like, I don't know, I've, I've never approached powerlifting as something that uh, I do because I think I'm cool that I do it, or that I think is like a cool thing societally, that like people think I'm I'm cool because I powerlift. It's just, I just like it. And I'm, I'm okay if it's not cool, because then I feel like there's less people that will do it for the sake of trying to be cool, and more people will do it because they love it and like me maybe can't not do it once they've started you know so i think it's just i mean it's like okay so you you lost your extrinsic motivation for powerlifting. like all right but uh I, yeah i don't think that's something that affects most people i don't think most people are like oh i'm gonna powerlift because it's cool you know these these fringe sports with very little in the way of like monetary reward it's very much just it's your own sort of personal journey with self-improvement and like that's kind of it you know so i don't know i just thought it was funny and, and dylan and i had a, an interesting and, and good productive conversation i think about it after that fact but yeah yeah very interesting i get my shot in my knee tomorrow i have the uh, i have some visco supplementation happening hyaluronic acid or something like that now we'll see how it goes we'll see if it does anything uh i don't think the research is super conclusive as to whether or not it's super efficacious but i talked to a number of lifters who like me have been doing this a long time who like me have accumulated injuries over the years and who like me are still performing or you know trying to perform at a very high level and the lifters that I spoke to said that it, it helped them. So, you know, uh, placebo is a hell of a drug. And if it, uh, if it helps even a bit at this point, I'm pretty excited to do that. Last thing, I swear. Yesterday I recorded a video uh, and put it out on Instagram. And essentially what has happened with this whole qualification process is there's now a Westerns, an Easterns, and a Centrals all within one week of another. Um, I think I think it's Central's first, then Western's, then Eastern's. Order's not that important. But what I did was I basically said, hey, if you're a 120 in Canada and you're trying to take or you know trying to earn the world spot, we'll say I want to compete against you. You know I don't I don't want to compare totals at different meets. I want to be at the meet where the strongest 120s in Canada are competing, and I want to compete with them, against them, however you want to look at it, and I want us to to throw down. You know, I think that's how we get the best athlete to go to Worlds. And that might not be me. You know, I, I understand that, I realize that, but I want the that level of competition. You know what I mean? And what I think is cool is that a lot of other, you know, sort of front runners in their weight class have latched onto that and started, you know, tagging some of their competitors and seeing, you know, what meet are you gonna do? What meet are you gonna do? And it sounds like Westerns is gonna be maybe the big one. So, I mean, obviously that works out really well for me, <laughs> selfishly, but uh, you know, my, my intention with the whole thing was that I will go to whatever meet, you know, the majority of competitive 120s are doing. And you know, if, if there can't be a consensus reached, I'll probably just do Easterns because that's the latest one. And that way I'll have the competitive advantage of seeing what everybody else did. But if I can get at least the majority of the 120s, and I listed the top 10 120s, top 10 120 totals from 2023, I tagged them all, 
except for Ryan Kochuk, not Krawchuk. I don't know how I, I, I read my own last name. <laughs> um, but yes, anyways, tag them all. And it sounds like Westerns is going to be the thing. So could be very cool. Could be very, very cool. Sounds like there's, uh, you know, some people that are now interested in coming and doing a live stream and making it really high production. There's some people who are talking about coming out to do some commentating and, you know, King of the Lifts has talked about trying to do some hype up stuff and make it into a bit more of a Nationals, <laughs> you know, uh, given that we, we don't have one. And that's all I ever wanted, you know, was a national. I just want to compete against the other 120s. I'm calling it hashtag 120 Nats, but this video has gone on long enough. Go check out our stuff, calgarybarbell.com. Thank you all for tuning in and sticking with us till the bitter end. Peace.